see my presentation <coughs> structure, including three, three narratives and discussion and kind of presentation of data. At the beginning of the second decade of 20th century, Iran had a critical situation. The most significant issues were the problematic appearance of Russia and England in the region. Financial problems rise from old design taxation. And both of them resulted in bad kind of weakness of political structure of Qajar dynasty in Iran. The presentation investigates the rise of the first modern state and its problematic relation with local powers, actually localities as a whole concept through the case of Sheikh Ghazal. Here you can see uh, archaeological and also historical materials. The most important ones are actually excavations in Khazal's palaces in Kuwait and Reza Khan's as the first modern governor in Iran, Reza Khan's writing, including his travel legacy, which is called Safarnameh Khuzestan. And also more than 200 historical documents mostly unpublished and also published one as well. Narration one, Sheikh Khazal Muhammad's ruler. Arabistan province is located in southwestern Iran and is the territory of Arabs and Bakhtiyari nomads. Sheikh Khazal bin Jaber was Sheikh of Bani Kaab tribe. After assassination of his brother, Khazal was suspected to lead it. He came to power in southern Khuzestan with Muhammare as its center. Uh, you can see the location of Muhammare or present Khuram Shah on Iran's map before and after disintegration. Before the disintegration is important because these areas uh, were usually part of Ottoman Empire. Okay, has an in official uh, Ajar costume and his traditional kind of Arabic costume. A turning point in Sheikh's political life was the discovery of oil in Khuzestan and the beginning of a close relationship with Anglo-Persian oil company in 1909. Due to his services, Sheikh received two British royal medals, particularly after the First World War because he did too much for England army during the First World War. Sheikh built his own palace in Failie, which was a small village on Failie River. Muhammad Castle, including governmental, military, and administrative, and palace of Khazal's father, Sheikh Jaber, stayed in his hands. Sheikh also constructed two buildings, Divaniye and Al Ghanem, one as house and the other as administrative in Kuwait. Uh, one of the oldest kind of topographical map from um, Karun area in the middle, you can see. Uh, uh, excuse me, Arab or Shatul Arab and its um, islands, and has as territory and also uh, part of Ottoman Empire because um, by that time there was no actual border between Iran Kingdom and Ottoman Empire, and people enjoyed kind of partnership and f of course free to move. Uh, archival and present photo from failure and um, distracted by probably by military services after Iran Islamic Repo uh, Revolution. Has uh, palaces in Kuwait. Tehran under Reza Mirpanjah's boot. By the time Khazal ruled his people and enjoyed a wide range of political and economical relationships with England, a Kassak officer supported by England led a coup against the Qajar government and was assigned as Minister of War and a bit later as Prime Minister. He proclaimed immediately martial law in Tehran. Ahmad Shah, the last Qajari king, frightened and disappointed, left the country to French. This one is kind of con um, confidential document from one of England agents in Iran to Lord Karzan, England agent in uh, usually India as the most uh, important colony of England. 
We people from Arabistan in alliance with the Bakhtiaris and other neighbor provinces demand the following. The return of Ahmad Shah to his throne. The independence of national parliament in decision making. Return to national constitution. Because Reza Khan was going to control everybody and every kind of um, governmental organizations, including, of course, parliament. Reza Khan, after suppressing Turk, Kurd, and low rebels, I considered Khuzestan from his travelogist Safarnami Khuzestan. Arabistan, fall 1924, April 1925. Dear Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to apologize you. Please accept my deep regret due to my improper strategies. It is a pleasure to be at your service. Khazal, November 1924. Mr. Sardar Aghdas, I accept your apology, but you must surrender yourself unconditionally. November 1924. But residents of Khuzestan, clergies, merchants, chieftains, peasants, rich and poor, and everybody, Khazal and his advocates will be suppressed soon. The inhabitants are not allowed to shelter him or his family. Khazal's house will be bombarded by shells. Reza Khan, likely 18 November of 1924. General F. Zahedi, actually close friend from Reza Khan, was appointed as martial ruler of Khuzestan. He was ordered to oppress oppositions. On 25 of April 1925, Sheikh Khazal was arrested and sent to Tehran. Reza Khan occupied his properties. His dead body was found in his house in Tehran in 1936. Some years later, forensic medicine confirmed that he was strangled. <coughs> Abadan refinery was located in Khazal's field oil wells in the territory of the Bakhtiaris. Extremely centralized, the new government was going to be the new partner of England after the First World War. Bakhtiari and Khazal contracts were not, of course, valid anymore. You can see different um, countries and also people that had kind of interest in black gold or oil. But how can we interpret conflict in Khuzestan? Uh, I would like to pay your attention to Agamben's state of exception and just a short and quick review of the most important features of a state of ex exception, including suspension of law, sovereign dictatorship, civil war, insurrection, resistance, and maybe the most important one is the provisional abolition of distinction among legislative, executive, and juridical powers. Reza Khan's 1921 coup and the declaration of martial law can be discussed as the introduction of a new form of political structure which highly suspended parliament's authority and questions localities. Uh, here we can see <laughs> different aspects of suppression in Khuzestan. Of course, military could be kind of short, per short term, and it leaves usually short term effects. But economy and identity as long term aspects of conflict and suppression is still, in my case, in this uh, context in Khuzestan. And um, in the third part, I mean identity, archaeology actually plays kind of bad role. Uh, here you can see some pieces of writings of Reza Khan. Um, actually, his ideas about Arab people of Khuzestan, the Arabs are somehow newcomers in Khuzestan. They gradually push Khuzi people, the main race of region, back to cities. And in Tehran, I ordered to stop calling the province Arabistan. All governmental organi organizations must use Khuzestan in their official writings in favor of referring to Khuzi people instead of Arab people. 
Khazal's negative image has influenced his sites as most palaces in Iran have been destroyed or repressed after 1979 and honestly also before 1979. The gradual destruction of Failia Palace symbolizes the problematic identity of the Arabs. According to Iran Cultural Heritage Organization, many of historical buildings in Ahwaz and Khoramshar um, two main cities um, which are almost completely settled by Arab people in Iran have been neglected for ages and not been registered except recently, including Khazal's own building. Um, these circles show somehow different levels and scales of suppression. Of course, the modern government start on just with Khazal and then they extended the scale of suppression to the whole Arab people of Khuzestan. Uh, to remove the recent past, its memory and materialities, the destruction of many Qajarid buildings, a serious attempt to link Iran to its glorious remote past, including architectural style, strongly inspired by Achaemenian style. The introduction of Iran national archaeological sites list and the construction of monuments for Iranian famous historical figures in different cities, but nothing was built in or introduced from Khuzestan. Uh, modern cities as kind of Reza Khan's utop utopia and archaeologic suppression in favor of national identity materialized again in this context, mostly in architecture. You can see Achaemenian style in inspired buildings in capital Teh Tehran. Um, Modern state and um, suppression actually kind of characteristic of modern state, at least the first modern state in Iran, the heritage of or cooperation with colonial powers, interest in nationalism, the misuse of ancient history and archaeology, and institutional suppression, which is very important because it has no background in, um, for example, Qajar period in Iran. It's very important. Uh, one of the most challenging heritage of modernism in Iran is denial of identities, particularly ethnic and religious. In case of Khaz al and Khuzestan, enjoying oil, different identity, and locating on the border formed a complex case conducted modern state to grow conflict and oppression. The military suppression of ethnicities was an introduction to Reza Khan's nationalism, which was followed by orientalists and archaeologists and continued under Muhammad Reza Shah. The project insisted on Aryan as national identity and Pars as the most significant Iranian ethnicity. Thank you for your attention.